Time to do another tier list, another position in Major League Baseball. This time, it's going to be first base. We've already done catchers, so if you haven't seen that, go to the channel, check it out after you watch this video. It's simple. I'm ranking all the first basemen in Major League Baseball from elite all the way to below average. We're going to see what you guys think down in the comments section below, of course. Let me know what you're thinking. But first, I want to give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, SeatGeek. Baseball season's back in full swing, and that means you can save $20 off tickets at SeatGeek using promo code GIRAFFE. If you don't know what SeatGeek is, let me tell you. It is a ticketing app that makes buying tickets super simple. I mean, I've got the app on my phone and it is by far in a way the easiest way to buy tickets. Whether it's baseball games, concerts, football preseasons coming up, if you need to buy tickets to something, SeatGeek's got it for you. As a Mets fan, you know I'm looking at those Astros and Rangers tickets next week and I wouldn't go anywhere else but SeatGeek to get them. What I particularly love about SeatGeek is that it gives you a score on your tickets. If the SeatGeek score is green, that means you're getting a good deal. If it's red, maybe you should avoid those. It's not necessarily the best deal. But seriously, don't worry. I've got the hookup. Use code GIRAFFE for $20 off tickets at SeatGeek. That's $20 off your first purchase with promo code GIRAFFE. Make sure you click the link in the description so you can download the app. Thank you to SeatGeek for sponsoring today's video. So the first player we have here is Chicago Cubs first baseman Alfonso Rivas. Would have thought it would have been Frank Schwindel coming into this, but no, Rivas has been getting majority of the playing time. He's just not particularly great right now. He's not really hitting. And again, first base defense is not particularly important. It's nice to have a good defensive first base but it is not the thing that really separates the great first baseman, in my opinion. It's offense. That being said, Alfonso Rivas just doesn't really do much of anything, which means he's going to be my first player in below average. Also, first player of the video. Anthony Rizzo has been great at first all year for the Yankees. The dude's hitting for power. I mean, he was kind of made to play in Yankee Stadium, and he's a guy who I think coming into the year, we were lower on than we currently feel. He's playing like that old Anthony Rizzo we saw with the Chicago Cubs. I think because of how good the town is at first base, he's right between this elite all-star level. Again, how many guys going elite how many going all-star you probably can't have more than like five guys in elite right because then elite is just everybody but he's really good so you know we'll put him in elite bobby 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 i wish bobby dahlbeck was playing better the dude came onto the scene to hit a lot of home runs but he's just not very consistent fun fact about bobby dahlbeck he won the home run derby of the week i was at cooperstown Dreams Park when I was 12. Also, a subtle flex, your boy hit three home runs in one game there. But yeah, Bobby Dahlbeck, while you were a star in Cooperstown, and I mean, you made it to the majors, he's a below average first baseman right now. Brandon Bell is having a weird year. He looked really, really good last year and was like, whoa, we've been underrating this guy. He's great, but he's kind of taking a little bit of a step back. I think he's also battled a few injuries this year. I think right now I'm gonna put him in the good, right around the good all-star level. It's so tough. There's so many first basemen around the fringe and it really is dependent on how they're playing this year. And for Brandon Bell, who's 34, Maybe those were the best years that we've seen. He's still very good. Carlos Santana ugh, just hasn't hasn't been great this year. He's always been an on-base machine, but another guy who's getting older in age and it seems like the play's starting to fall off. For now, I'm gonna put him at average because he still does walk. Still has a crazy high walk rate at 16.8% and doesn't strike out a lot. So that is at least basically an average first baseman. Christian Walker is the stat cast king. You go on Baseball Savant, you see his percentiles, and you go, this guy's Mike Trout. And then you see his numbers, and you go, okay, it's a lot of home runs. He's definitely a good hitter, but how good is he? And to be honest, while he is a game cock, and I would love to be biased here, I think he honestly just goes in the good category. I think Christian Walker is a very solid first baseman. CJ Crone, the Crone zone. I love CJ Crone. Underrated player because he plays in Colorado, and he really, I mean, he has like no hands. Catching the ball is not necessarily the easiest thing for him, but at the plate, he's always mash. He will always mash, and I'll put him in the good category. I think he's a very good first baseman. Let's get crazy. Hosmer. I know he started hot, but he's doing that Eric Hosmer thing again. Great first month. Okay, second, and he's starting to fall off a little bit. He's just, he's average. I think he's better than Carlos Santana, but I just don't put him in the same range as like Brandon Belt, Christian Walker, and CJ Crone, who I think will hit well over the entire season. You look at his WRC+, plus, it's just, it's, it's good. It's above average, but I just don't see him on the same level as these other guys, and maybe that's just because I'm a Mets fan and we know what he did to me in 2015. But Padres fans, you know this too. Eric Hosmer does this every single year and by the end of it, you go, oh, underwhelming. The franchise, Franchi Cordero. Yeah, Franchi Cordero is just below average. He's an outfielder who has some interesting tools, but he just doesn't ever really put it together. Freddie Freeman. Yeah, Freddie Freeman's still one of the best first basemen in all of baseball. He went to LA and while I don't want to say he started slow, the power numbers were a little bit slow for sure, but that was also for everyone at the beginning of the year. Feels like since the month of June started up, Freddie Freeman has been on a tear and it's 
just simply because he is one of the best first basemen in all of baseball. While he might not be putting up the home run numbers like Rizzo, like CJ Cronin, like Christian Walker on this list, putting Freddie Freeman anywhere but a lead is absolutely crazy. First base is so deep, but I, I can't really go anywhere else but good for Jared Walsh. It's very good. I think he's another one of these guys. It feels like good right now. All these dudes are borderline all-stars, maybe outside of Brandon Belt because of the injuries this year. But these guys all, like, if they get hot right before the all-star break, have a chance to maybe sneak onto the team. But right now, I think they are just that next tier of first baseman. It's such a deep position because really, it's all about offense. And most of these guys all hit. And again, defense isn't that valuable really at first base. Jared Walsh is definitely good though. Jesus, Jesus Aguilar is one of the more quietly fun players in baseball. The dude always has a big smile on his face. He's also really solid. But that being said, just because he's a nice player to have in your lineup, doesn't mean that he's necessarily like all-star level or even in the good level for me. I always think of Jesus Aguilar as someone who on a young team, kind of like the Marlins, would be a great veteran presence. So for those reasons, I'm going to put him in the average category. I do think he's probably your average first baseman. G-Man Choi, a guy who's a bit of a platooner. You know, he basically faces right-handed pitching, although he has hit lefties well in the very, very few plate appearances he has. But he hits righties. He's a platoon guy for the Rays, but mostly their first baseman. I'm going to put G-Man in the good category. He's a solid good first baseman. I really, I, I, I actually don't know what to do with Joey Votto. He has not been good this year, but last year he popped off. And you look at the Reds lineup and you go, yeah, he has no protection. So like what is there for him to really do? I'm still going to put Joey Votto in good, I think. I'm still going to put him in good. I know he's not playing well this year, and I've punished other guys who actually might be having better years this season. Joey Votto, I think, is still a good player. He's still walking like 14% of the time. I know Carlos Santana's walking the same, but I don't know. Maybe this is me just being a little clouded brain here, but Joey Votto's still good, right? Right? What do you guys think down in the comments? Let me know. Jose Abreu. Jose Abreu is another one of these first basemen who's also good. Very good. I don't think he's in that all-star tier right now, again, because of how good the offense has been at this position, but I'm sure by the end of the year, we're going to see Jose Abreu with 25 to 30 home runs and 100 RBIs like he does every single year that he's ever played Major League Baseball. I will continue to say it. One of the more slept on first basemen just because he doesn't play good defense, but again, who cares? Fun fact though, career high walk rate this year, 12.5%. Huge. Josh Bell's really surprised me. We've seen him do this before, but I think this is more sustainable. He's hitting really, really well. Now, granted, is it because no one wants to face Juan Soto? Maybe, but obviously it's showing that when he gets the opportunity to see pitches that he can actually hit, he's pretty good. Josh Bell's got like a 141 WRC plus. He's hitting for power as a switch hitter, hitting 300. We're going to throw Josh Bell as the first guy right now in the all-star tier. I think he has a very good chance to make the all-star team. The problem is first base is so loaded. So there's just going to be guys that are better and there won't be enough room because Josh Bell plays first base. But I think he's playing at an all-star caliber level. Josh Taylor's playing really well. I want to see a little bit more out of him this year before I start getting crazy about him. He had also that one huge game that I feel like is maybe boosting his stats a little bit. I think Josh Naylor is good. I think Josh Naylor goes in the good tier. Luis Arise. I mean, I can't put him in elite because the power is, is definitely not there. And I do think to be elite, I don't know. Maybe you could make the argument maybe that he's elite, but I'm just not there. I'm going to put him in all-star though. This dude mashes, but in a different way, in a non-conventional first base type of way. I know a lot of you are going to say, oh, he plays second and third base because of injuries. He's the first baseman when the team's healthy and Jorge Polanco's there. But he's hitting 345 with a 427 on base, which is by far the best in Major League Baseball right now. He's leading the league. He's playing out of his mind. I mean, I'm honestly starting to talk myself into maybe he's elite. He's got the third highest WRC plus among qualified first basemen at 154. Man, Luis Arise, you're playing so well. I'll put him, I'll put him at the top of all-star. I, I, can't put him in elite yet because the power. I'm sorry, I can't, but he's so good. Matt Olson is so good too. And I know the numbers haven't been great this year, but that's expected. He's going from the American League West to the National League East. There's going to be some, you know, adjustment period. In my heart, I, I Matt Olson's elite. Like in my heart, Matt Olson's elite. He's probably playing around like an all-star caliber player right now, which uh, these rankings are very confusing, I know, especially when I put all-star, elite, good, average, below average. Basically, you got to think of like the really, really good players, the next tier, the next tier. Like that's how you have to think about it. It's not that I think Matt Olson is an all-star this year because I don't think he deserves it, but just because he's having like a weaker 70, 80 game stretch doesn't mean he's still not elite because we've seen him year in and year out. He's unbelievably good. So I think anywhere but a leap from Matt Olson would be silly. I really do. So Michael Chavis is swinging the bat well, but that being said, all these first base, I mean, look at this list. Almost everybody's swinging the bat well. So that puts him in the average tier just because 
he's right around like 100 WRC plus. And maybe by the end of the year, it evens out. He's playing nice, he's playing well. He's not hurting his team by any means. I just, it's average. You have to be better offensively at first base if you want to get higher. It's also the same thing with Nate Lowe or Nathaniel Lowe. I think he's a solid first baseman. But is that the guy that you want to be your franchise cornerstone at the first base position with all the other guys? I mean, look at look at all the other guys that are playing better than him right now. He's still good. You can be good. It's just there are a lot of people that are better. So it's, it's weird. First base is a weird position. So our guy Owen Miller has cooled off quite a bit since the start of the year. He's not the same player that we once saw. I know his WRC plus is basically average at 100 right now. Just I'm just going to put him in below average. What makes him valuable is that he can play a bunch of different positions, being first base being included, but strictly as a first baseman up against all these other guys, ah, just doesn't really get it going for me and he's not been great. Paul Goldschmidt. Paul Goldschmidt is just on another planet right now, and I'm happy about it. I mean, I'm a Mets fan, so I don't want the Cardinals to do too well, because technically they are competition, but I'm glad that Paul Goldschmidt's playing so well, and people are recognizing it, because this is a guy who is going to be a Hall of Famer, or at least people need to start talking about him being a Hall of Famer. Since his, like, first full season in 2012, including the weird short season, he's averaging, like, 30 homers, 30 doubles, 90 RBIs a season, with a 300 average, 400 on base, and a 920 OPS. I mean, this guy's an absolute stud. So yeah, Paul Goldschmidt's going elite. He's, he's so sick. So is my boy Big Meat Pete. Pete Alonso is elite. Pete Alonso is doing some crazy stuff at the plate this year. He's always been a big power guy. But this year, he's taken a huge step forward. For him to strike out around 20% of the time and walk right around 10, along with just how hard he hits the ball and how consistently he does it, Pete Alonso's elite. Pete Alonso is one of the best first basemen in all of baseball. Do I think he's the MVP this year? No, Paul Goldschmidt exists still. But man, Pete Alonso leading the league in RBIs? Stud. As much as I don't like Reese Hoskins, probably one of my least favorite players in baseball, I'll put him in the good category. Like if I'm gonna put Joey Votto and Josh Naylor and a couple of the other guys, I think Reese Hoskins definitely belongs to be in the good category. He's good. He's a good hitting first baseman. That's all he is. For Rowdy, I think Rowdy's just average. Not great at the first base position defensively by any means. Again, a little bit clunky over there. And at the plate, he hits the ball hard. He hits for power, but it's just not better than really many of these other guys. I made this tier list. Who is this? Is this Seth Brown? I believe so. Seth Brown's below average. He's really an outfielder playing first base just because it's the Oakland A's and they'll put anyone at first base on any given day. He's played it the most for the A's, it feels like, this year, so I went with Seth Brown. It's below average. He's not particularly great. Doesn't hit for crazy power. Doesn't really get on base at a high clip. Just Seth Brown. It's the A's. So I think Spencer Torkelson will be fine, but he's getting eaten alive in Comerica this year. He has looked rough. And this year, which is the only thing we really have to take him on right now, you have to put him in below average. As good as I think he's going to be in his career right now, based on what we've seen at the major league level, I have to be fair to everybody else. He has not been good below average. Trey Mancini. Trey Mancini's good, which is now, it feels like the good's now actually turning into the average category. I, I don't know what to do here, guys. There's just a lot of really good first basemen, especially right now. Trey Mancini's good. He's a good hitter, and he's actually not taking too much of a hit with Baltimore changing the left field to make it almost impossible to hit a home run. So good for Trey Mancini. Also great story, as always. Ty France. Let's put Ty France in the all-star category. Yes, Ty France. Vote for him for the All-Star game. I know he just went on the IL, but he should still get voted into the game. He's having a great year. He's been great ever since going out to Seattle. One of the more underrated players in baseball because he plays out in the Pacific Northwest and the Mariners have been disappointing. But Ty France, very good. Vladdy, Vladdy's just, he's so good. Vladdy's elite, of course, duh. I know there are first basemen playing better than him this year, but just... You watch this guy play and you go, oh, that's one of the best first basemen in the game. That guy hits the ball extremely hard, extremely far. He's still an all-around really good player, and I do think Vladimir Guerrero Jr., I think he is an elite first baseman. Yuli Gurriel, on the other hand, I, I think Yuli's probably below average. Yuli's old, and it feels like it's finally starting to show. 38 years old, and he looks like a 38-year-old now. He's never been a guy who's had this crazy huge power. He was a big, I'm gonna hit ground balls and I don't walk a lot guy. He's old. That's what you expect for a guy like this of Yuli Gurriel's age. I'm just waiting for them to make Jordan out as a first baseman. How has that not happened yet? Can please Astros fans explain to me? Is there something I don't know? So I'm looking at this. I, I honestly feel pretty good. I am cool with having Rizzo in this elite category. He is playing like it. He's played like it in the past. Why not give him a little bit of a nod? By no means inside these tiers are these the rankings, but I do think that these are the top six third first baseman right now. These are the guys right outside of it. 
and then figuring out the rest of the top 10. I mean, I think this is pretty accurate. I'd love to know what you guys think about my tier list down in the comment section below. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Want to know your thoughts and opinions? Drop a like on the video if you do enjoy it, as well as subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the content coming at you. Follow me on all my social media at GiraffeNickMark. Link is in the description, as well as a huge shout out to SeatGeek for sponsoring today's video. That's where I'll wrap it up, guys, though. You know the drill from here on out. YouTube recommends you watch this video. This is my most recent upload, so click through to those if you have not yet seen them. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all soon for another video. Bye.